Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. Our headquarters, our house of prayer, our church, it's all here in South Florida. We meet on Sundays for church at 1047 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Corporate prayer Monday nights and Friday nights. Come on, get involved. Let God bless you as you pray for your city, your region. We're here, awakeningprayerhubs.com. I'm in recruiting mode. We need to see 250 prayer hubs in cities and nations around the world before the end of this year. We need to see it. We need to see it. If you want to be raised up as a prayer leader, you know what? Some people, they quit so soon at anything in life. One month, two months, three months, you're not going to build a prayer hub that fast unless you've got existing contacts. So just come in with the right expectations because I want to raise you up. I want to see you grab those eternal rewards that come from praying. You know, I feel very strongly that some of the greatest rewards in eternity are going to go to the intercessors, even those who stood in a closet by themselves under the banner of love. AwakeningPrayerHubs.com. Join that movement. Find a hub. Start a hub. It's critical. I'm in recruiting mode. I've never gone into recruiting mode. Why? Jesus was in recruiting mode. He walked by people and said, follow me. James and John. He walked by them. Peter and Andrew. He walked by them. He said, follow me. He walked by Matthew. He said, follow me now. Let the dead bury the dead. Follow me now. Amen. Follow me as I follow Christ and seeing awakening and revival come to the nations. Awakening Prayer Hubs. Dot com. I'm the founder of the Ignite Prophetic Network, ignitenow.org. Check that out. We're a prophetic family doing prophetic life together. You have a prophetic voice, and God has called you to live a prophetic lifestyle. Find out how. Get in the right company, ignitenow.org. Today's devotion is from Victory Decrees, and this is for somebody, and I don't know uh, what some of you are going through, but if this is not for you, intercede for those it's for, because uh, this devotion is very dear uh, very near to my heart today. I feel so much compassion for so many. And the devotion from Victory Decrees, Daily Prophetic Strategies for Spiritual Warfare Victory, is entitled, When You Feel Like You're Dying Inside. When You Feel Like You're Dying Inside. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Even though you feel like you're dying on the inside, even though you feel like it's never going to change, even though you feel like you have nowhere else to turn, and no matter where you go, it's another enemy attack. I am with you, says the Lord. I will, re I will pour out my spirit upon you and I will refresh you if you'll stop looking at things the way they are and begin to look at the things the way I told you they would be. If you will put out your faith in me and put your hope in me and put your trust in me, I will deliver you from this place more quickly than you think. Come on, that's a word for somebody that's hurting and feeling like they're about to fail today. 1 Corinthians 3, 16, Mark 11, 22 through 24, Psalm 9, verse 10 are the scripture references for today. Now the prayer starter and the decree, Father, help me to tap into faith instead of letting my feelings tap out my emotional energy. Teach me how to lean completely on you for everything. I decree death to the enemy's plots and schemes against my destiny. I declare my faith is in the faithful God who delivers me from the cords of death in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Jesus. We give you praise God. We honor you this morning. We honor you as the God who conquered death, hell, and the grave. We honor you as the God who resurrects, who breathes new life into things that are almost dead and raises up things that are completely dead. We praise you. You are that God, the God of the impossible, the God who is with us when we don't feel like we can take another step, the God who is for us when it seems like every enemy from hell is against us. You are that God, the faithful God. You are faithful even when we're not faithful. That is who you are. That is your promise to us that you will be by our 
our side, that you will go before us to prepare a way for us, that you will serve as our rear guard. And as a matter of fact, you've even promised that you will surround us with favor as a shield. You are the omnipresent God and the omnipotent God. That is who we serve. That is who we praise. That is who we pledge our allegiance to today. Oh, Jesus, we break our allegiance to every other God. We break our covenant with every other God. We break our agreement with every other God. The idols, the demons that come with convincing stories that we sometimes buy into the false narratives of the wicked ones that rule and shape our lives, the false narratives of religion that skew our perspective of Jesus, the false narratives running through our mind since childhood based on what elders taught us and told us. They morphed us. They molded us. Jesus, we break every false narrative. We break break every false covenant. We break every false allegiance. We pledge our allegiance to you, not even to a nation, but to a person, the desire of the nations, Jesus, the ruler of the nations, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you are the supreme ruler. You have the preeminence. You are the all in all. You are the beautiful God. It's all about you, Jesus. We make it all about you today. You are the breaker. You are the forerunner. You are the God who dwells on the inside of us. The spirit of Christ. Oh, Jesus, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwelling, living, moving, working on the inside of us. We're so grateful for who you are. When we feel like we can't pick up one foot and put it in front of the other, we can look to you for strength. We can look to you for grace. We can look to you, look to you, look to you until we see things through the right lens again. We can keep looking to you, not leaning to our own understanding, but looking to you, not listening to the vain imaginations, but looking to you, not trying to drown out our sorrows and entertainment, but looking to you, the author and the finisher of our our faith. That is who you are. We put a, a, a claim and a stake on that. That is the truth on which we stand. That you gave us the measure of faith. Come on. He gave us the measure of faith. That's how good he is. He gave us the measure of faith. He gave us the measure of faith. He gave us a seedling of faith. He gave us some starter faith. He gave us enough faith to believe in him to begin with. That is how good he is. We didn't even have the faith to get born again. And he gave us the faith. He gave us the measure of faith. He wooed us into his presence. He wooed us into his kingdom. He gave us the faith to say yes. He gave us the faith to believe in our hearts. He gave us the faith to confess with our mouth. It's called the measure of faith. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for the measure of faith. Oh, Jesus, help us to grow that measure, God. Help us, Lord. We want to grow in faith, grow in faith, grow in faith. You authored it. You'll finish it. The middle part is up to us. This journey we are on, it's up to us. It's up to us. You gave us the tools. You gave us the weapons. You gave us the blood. You gave us the name. You gave us the faith. You gave us the word. You gave us the heavenly language. Now it's up to us. Your grace grace is sufficient to press past the obstacles by faith. Your grace is sufficient to bust demons by faith. Your grace is sufficient to crucify the flesh by faith. Your grace is sufficient, oh, to die to self by faith. Paul said, it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. It is not I who lives, but Christ lives in me. It's another level. It's another level. It's another 
another level of living. That is what it means to live and move and have your being in Christ. It is when no one can tell the difference between you and him. Your words sound like his words. Your walk looks like his walk. Your thoughts sound like his thoughts. Oh, Jesus, you look like Jesus. You look like Jesus. You look like Jesus. It is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Come on. That is where we are trying to go. It's not about another uh, angel encounter. Come on. It's not about another demon you see hiding behind the doorknob. It's not about another vision that you have of something spectacular. It's not about another dream of the end times. It's about Jesus. Oh God. It's about Jesus. Oh Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about him. It's not about seeing another angel. I'm so tired of all the news reports in Christianity today. Oh, 10 angels came to me with 10 messages. Oh, an angel came and knocked on my door this morning. Oh, an angel sat on my bed and told me a bedtime story. I'm so tired of all these false encounters with angels. I'm so tired of them being puffed up in the vain imaginations of their mind. Like Paul said, I don't care about angelic encounters. I'm not against them. I don't, I don't, I don't discount the true ones, but I'm not so much interested in encountering an angel. If I had my druthers, if I had my preference, if I had it my way, I would have an encounter with the almighty, one true, omnipotent God almighty, Jesus. I'd give up every angel encounter ever known to mankind for one true, deep, heartfelt, life-changing encounter with Jesus. I don't discount the ministry of angels. I believe in the ministry of angels, angelic portals, angelic communications. I teach it all. But, oh, Jesus, in this hour, your church has put too much of an emphasis on the ministering spirits and not on the spirit that created the ministers. Jesus, we long for an encounter with you. It's not just a supernatural encounter because the devil can give us a supernatural encounter. We want to encounter your heart. We're not looking for an encounter so we can make a Facebook video that goes viral. We're not looking for an encounter so we can write an article that goes crazy online. We're not looking for an article that makes us YouTube famous. We're not looking for an encounter that causes us to rise up in the rankings on the podcast. We're not looking for an encounter for the sake of fame or for the sake of attention. We are looking for an encounter because we are desperate for you, God. We are seeking you day and night, night and day, because we're desperate for you, God. We are getting up before the sun rises because we are desperate for you, God. We are awakening the dawn because we are desperate for you, God. We are seeking first your kingdom because we're desperate for you, oh God. I'm not desperate for an angelic encounter. Pardon me. Maybe that's not a very popular thing to say in this hour where everybody's having angels come knock on their door every other day and bring messages that they can't share with the body of Christ unless you give them $100. I don't know. Maybe that's the new thing. Maybe that's the chic kind of, you know, way that we're supposed to operate. But somehow it doesn't sound like God to me. We want an encounter with the one true living God. We've had enough demonic encounters. Oh, Jesus. We've had enough encounters with the spirit of fear. Somebody, somebody tell the truth. Come on. Can I get a witness? We've had enough encounters with Jezebel, haven't we? Come on, haven't we? Do you really want one more encounter with Jezebel? Or do you want to get equipped by the spirit of God himself to stand and withstand in the evil day against every principality and power that comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life? We're desperate for an encounter with the one true living God, Jesus. We need you. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. There is no other God before you. There is no other God beside you. There is no other God. Only demons posing as gods. Posers. We will not soothe. We will not serve or sue the poser God. Oh, Jesus. How many people out there are serving a poser God? You're serving a poser God. You're having encounters with the poser God. Jesus. The prophets of Baal, they had an encounter with the poser God, and they were cutting themselves and screaming and beating themselves. 
trying to get him to manifest. But their God was dead, and our God is alive, and he's alive in us. And we want that daily manna, Jesus. We want the daily bread, Jesus. We want the daily communication, Jesus. We want the daily fellowship, Jesus. You are the one true living God, and we are desperate for you. Desperate, desperate, desperate more than my daily food. I am desperate, hungry, zealous, fervent, pursuing. Oh, I wish I could get 10 people to come with me. Jesus, you've opened a door today. Jesus, you've opened a door. (laughs) I just saw a picture of a doorway and above the doorway, there's a sign, an emblem, and it says desire. It says desire. It's a door of desire. There are some doors that you can't get through without great desire. This door that I see open before us, it is for only those who have a deep desire for the deep things of God. (laughs) Deep cries unto deep. It'll take some determination to go through the door. It'll take some determination to go through the door. It'll take some determination to go through the door. Why? Because every demon power in hell will try to resist you. Because behind the door to desire, the behind the door that's called desire, man, there's the deeper encounters. Behind the door called desire, there are things that eye has not seen or ear heard, neither has ever entered into the heart of man. But the Holy Spirit will reveal them behind that threshold. It's the door called desire. David said in Psalm 27, one thing I have desired (laughs) and that will I seek to gaze upon his beauty all the days of my life, to inquire in his temple. David was inquisitive of God. He was inquisitive of his emotions. Everything will try to keep you from going through that door. Your flesh has its own desires. I said, your flesh has its own desires. You're going to have to put your determination where your desire is because your flesh has its own desires and you can't take that bucket of flesh through the door of desire. You're going to have to crucify it. It's not a physical flesh and blood door and physical flesh and blood can't go through it. It's your spirit man that will go. You're going to have to crucify the flesh if you want to go through the door of desire. You're going to have to crucify the flesh. Paul said, I die daily. That's what he said. He said, I die daily. Isn't that what he said? He said, I die daily. That means every single day of your life, you get up with a determination to have an encounter with the desire of the nations. It's another name for Jesus. The desire of the, (laughs) the desire of the nations, his inner chambers. That is the place we're seeking to enter the inner chamber. The secret place, the hidden room, it's not for everybody. It's for everybody technically, but it's not for everybody because most people don't even know it's there and most people don't care. And even most believers aren't willing to do what it do, what it takes, because there's a price of admission to go through the door of desire. So it comes down to this. What do you desire more? What desires will rule your heart? Will the desires of your flesh outwit the desires of your spirit? Will the desires of your soul overpower the desires of your spirit? His desire is for you. You are his beloved. You are his bride. You are the apple of his eye. One look, one glance ravishes his heart. One glance in his direction, it melts his heart. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he desires you. The door of desire is open. It's open. It's hard to get into because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. (laughs) So, Father, help us today to put our determination where our desire is to determine not to allow our flesh to rule our hearts anymore, but to enthrone you as the king of our heart. We don't just want to sing about how you're the king of our heart (laughs) and then go home and flesh out when the door of desire is wide open to us if we're determined enough to do what it takes 
to pay the price of admission. What is the price of admission? Humility. <laughs> what is the price of admission? Hunger. What is the price of admission? Thirst. What is the price of admission? Seeking. What is the price of admission? Be still and know that I am God. What is the price of admission? Be quiet in his presence. What is the price of admission? Get in his word. What is the price of admission? Meditate on his truth. What is the price of admission? Gaze upon his beauty. Come on, there's a price of admission, but it's not too high. It's not too high for you. It's too high for some, but it's not too high for you. The price of admission is too high for some. They don't see that it's worth it, but the reality is he is worthy of it all. <laughs> he is worthy of it all. From him are all things, and to him are all things. He deserves the glory. He deserves the glory. He deserves the glory and the honor. The door of desire is open before you. Will you pay the price of admission, or will you allow the cares of this world and the desire for other things to choke you out before you go through the gate? Father, help us today to reprioritize what we need to reprioritize, to see things in a different way. Remind us, because we've heard all these things before. We've heard all the yes and amen promises. Our hearts have been pricked with hunger time and time again, only to be quickly satisfied by something else, an alternative to Jesus, entertainment, sleep. Help us, Lord, because we've heard all this before, but the hard part is remembering it moment by moment instead of reacting to the issues in life and the cares of the world and all these things that come against us all day long. The hard part is remembering to respond in Christ and not react in our soul or react in our flesh. So help us today to remember this. Help us today. Renew our minds. Help us today because we can't even enter the door desire without you. Even though you've opened it wide, even though you've given us the price of admission, even though you've given us the measure of faith, even though, even though, even though, even though, apart from you, we can't do anything. We can't even enter the door that you've opened wide without your help. We're utterly dependent on you. We're desperate. We are desperate. We are desperate for you. Nothing else will do. No substitute will satisfy from this day forward. No false, phony, fake, prophetic, no false, phony, fake encounter. No fleeting entertainment or worldly joy can ever fill the void that comes from your absence. Help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, today. Help us, Lord, today. We praise you. You are a good God. You're a good, good father. Your desire is for us. And our desire is for you. And this is a day of demarcation. And we will go higher. And we will enter through the door of desire. And we will find everything we've ever hoped for. In your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, wasn't that good? God is taking us higher on these prayer calls. I want you to share this with somebody. I know what's happening. I know what's going on, and I know why it's been stronger this past week. I know. Maybe I'll share that with you for another time. Right now, I want to get into something else. I heard the Lord say yesterday morning, and I was meditating on it this morning. And I want you to share this broadcast right now with somebody because I'm asking nicely. I'm trying to help people. So take a moment as I take a sip of water and a sip of coffee and share this with somebody because we're going higher right about now. This is a strategy for some of you. What I'm about to pray through, what I'm about to share, it's going to unlock something for you and many other people. So hit that share button, share it in your group, share it on your timelines, tag a friend, do whatever you have to do. So I'm ready to, to go into part two. The Lord is saying, it's a time to repair the nets. This is what he's saying. This is one thing that he is saying right now. It's time to prepare 
to repair, to mend the nets. It's time to repair the nets. You see this here in Matthew 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 4, verse 21. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. So you repair your nets during the off season. You repair your nets in between fishing expeditions. Ideally, you repair your nets in the downtime. And many of you have had some downtime. And the Lord is saying, it's time to repair the nets. Think about this before we pray into it. Think about it. Maybe, just maybe I'm asking you, could it be possible that you're not catching a break because the net can't hold it? Could it be possible that you're not hauling in the breakthrough because the net can't hold it? You need to repair the net. What does that mean practically? It means you need to repair your soul. You need to repair your vision. You need to repair your mouth. You need to repair some things in your life that God wants to use to bring in your next harvest, to bring in the dreams and visions, to bring in the breakthroughs. I submit to you today, some of you have broken nets and that's why every time you go forth into something thinking and expecting and knowing the breakthrough is nigh, you get nothing or it evaporates quickly because it slides through the hole in the net. Maybe your nets are brittle. Maybe they're broken. It's time to repair the nets, repair your perspective, repair your attitude, repair your discipline. Are you hearing me today? I don't know what your net looks like, but I heard the Lord say it's time to repair the nets. Well, your nets get damaged for many reasons. Hear me. Your nets get damaged for many reasons. Maybe the enemy attacked your net. What? Maybe he attacked your soul, attacked your family. Maybe the net is your family. Maybe the net is your business. It's time to repair the nets. Apply this to your life. Maybe the enemy attacked your net. Maybe the enemy attacked your health. Maybe your net's just worn out. You've been doing the same thing the same way forever. And you need a new technology. You need a new vision. You need a new goal. You need a new perspective. You need to try a different way to do the thing you've been doing the same time because what you're doing is not working. Just shift it up, shake it up. Maybe your net is just broken because the last breakthrough was so massive that your net just wasn't big enough to hold it. It just wasn't big enough. There's all kinds of reasons why your net can be broken. What's your net? Your relationships, your business, your family, your mind, your health, your vision, your perspective. The NIV says they were in a boat with their father Zebedee. Listen, preparing their nets. So to repair is to prepare for the next catch. You repair as part of your preparation. You make repairs to prepare so that you're steady and solid for what comes next. After a great victory, sometimes comes a great attack. You've got to regroup. You've got to prepare. You've got to repair the nets. Listen, when you repair and prepare, listen, when you repair and prepare, God will give you a breakthrough strategy. He's got to make sure you can hold the breakthrough. He's got to make sure that you're steady as she goes. Listen, John 21, verse six, Jesus said to them, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat and you will find a catch. So they cast the net and they were not able to haul it in because the great number of fish catch this, cast the net on the right hand side of the boat. This was an extremely specific strategy. He could have said, cast it out. They they would have cast it anywhere they wanted. He said, cast it on the right side, not behind you, not in front of you, not on the left side, cast it on the right side. It was a very specific strategy the Lord gave them. But guess what? If their nets were broken, 
If their nets were broken, they wouldn't have been able to haul in that fish. And I don't believe that the Lord would have given them the strategy to cast the net if the net were broken. What would be the point? Lord's not going to give you a strategy if some things in your life need to be repaired. He's going to give you a strategy to repair, but not to cast out. Are you following me? He's going to give you a strategy to repair. He'll give you a strategy, but it's not going to be for increase. It's going to be to fix what's broken so that you can get the increase. To repair is to prepare. Listen, if your nets aren't ready, if your soul's not ready, if your will is not ready, if your emotions aren't ready, come on. If your time management is not ready, you can't cast, you can't, you can't launch into the deep. You'll drown. You can't go somewhere God's not sending you. That's the problem. Some of you go way out the deep end, way out the deep end, way out the deep end. And God didn't send you there. That's why you're drowning. When he sends you to the deep end, you won't drown. You might think you are going to, but you won't when he sends you, when he gives you the word. Luke 5, 4. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now look, Peter had more than one net. What did Jesus say to put it? In the deep. That was a different strategy than throwing it to the right. We get so caught up in the same strategies, doing the same thing over and over. And if it's not working, then you got to do something different. And it's possible if it's not working, there's something in you that's not working. Maybe even you're in a rut, you're resistant to change. You don't want to move on with the times. You don't want to try new technologies. You don't want to learn any new skills. You don't want to get that marriage counseling. You got to get your nets ready. You got to prepare them. Repair, prepare, and mend. The Lord says it's time, time to repair the nets. So Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to see where our nets need to be repaired. Which nets need to be repaired? Is it the net of our financial status? Is it the net of our relational issues? Is it the net of our own soul? Is it the net of, what is it? Show us what we need to prepare in our life. And what do we need to repair so we can prepare? What relationships we need to mend? God, help us. Help us to see it. Help us to see it. Help us to see it. Help us to see it so that we can cooperate with you because you have a strategy for breakthrough. You have a strategy for a haul. You have the strategy. If our nets are broken or brittle and we don't know it, if our nets are broken and brittle and we can't see it, then we're toiling. We're wasting our time. And you've not called us to waste time. You've called us to redeem the time because the days are evil. You've not called us to waste time. So help us, Lord. To repair in our lives what needs to be repaired. The wrong thinking, the health issues, the weight issues. Uh Uh-oh, I've gone to meddling now. The being undisciplined, unwilling to learn a new skill to take us where we haven't yet been before. Help us, Lord, to see what we need to change, how we need to repair things in our lives that the enemy attacked. Things that atrophied because we never used them. Or even to repair from the last Hall, because sometimes victory precedes a season of just exhaustion from that, from the long battle. So help us to regroup, help us to repair, help us to prepare and help us to mend. Help us to sit in your presence and meditate on this and ask you, Lord, what do I need to repair? If you'll do this, you'll go into the new year with a new strategy, a new plan of action, a new understanding, a new wisdom a new perspective, a new insight. I'm telling you the truth. This is what I've been doing for the past several weeks, just trying to repair the nets, trying to mend the nets, trying to see what is broken, what's not working anymore. Did you know that a net that works in certain seasons might not work in other seasons? Sometimes you just need to change the net out completely. And some nets can no longer be repaired. It would take too much work to repair them as to just get a new net. And that's what I'm saying. Some of you, your nets are just worn out. You need some new nets. The way you're thinking about a thing, the way you're approaching a thing, it's old school, man. It's not going to work in the new era. Jesus, we thank you for the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Because you are awesome. You are so mighty. You are so great. There's no other God like you. We give you praise and honor and glory. We magnify your name today. 
You are the one true living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses and Joshua, the God of Peter, Paul, James, John, and Matthew. You are that God. And we give you glory for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, isn't God good? Isn't God good? These are just simple nuggets from scripture. And if we'll obey the Lord and seek the truths, it's not just a story. It's not just a narrative. It's not just a chronicle of something that happened in history and what the Lord said. There's deeper truths behind these things we can apply to our lives every day. This is my goal in life is to continue becoming more like Jesus every day to allow him to live through me. It's not an easy place to get to. I think it takes many years and decades to get to a place like that. But if we never try, we'll never get there. See your activation for kids is at schoolofthespirit.tv. There's a lot of stuff at schoolofthespirit.tv. Unshakable faith at uncertain times. That series starts September 14th. Developing spiritual discernment. Guys, that's, that's just one every single one of you needs to take. Everybody took that remnant webinar. This is more important than the remnant webinar. Developing spiritual discernment. It's more important than the remnant. Every one of you needs to take this. It's also way more extensive than the remnant webinar. God bless you. Have a great day.